Hey, hey, Tanner James, DJ, TJ, and welcome back to the Peak Period Podcast. Look, we have an awesome guest on the show. It's not a guest DJ. It's actually a photographer and videographer uh, out here in Sacramento. He is my personal uh, videographer and photographer who does all of my uh, events, and I absolutely love him. Uh, And so he's going to come and give you some tips about working with photographers and working with um, other kind of vendors at more of the uh, mobile events so that it can definitely help you. So he's about to jump on and then um, we I will wrap it up towards the end. So I will see you once we are all done. All right, so yeah, Matt, thank you for jumping on today. Matt is from Dynamic Cinema Productions. Uh, out here in Sacramento, he does a lot of uh, photography and videography, and he's actually editing all my videos for the DJ TJ training program. So when you see all the cool edits that are in there, those are all him. So thank you for jumping on the podcast today. Yeah, thanks, uh, Tanner. It's uh, great to be here. Yeah, so we're going to go over uh, just kind of a few things that will help you um, get on preferred vendors lists and that will help you, uh, connect with other vendors better than you are now. And so I thought it would be best instead of me just telling you to actually have another vendor jump on because that would definitely, uh, add another, um, kind of side to the, to what I'm saying. So what a preferred vendor list is, is it's where you actually, it's like a referral list of the vendors. And so it's not as easy to get on as it may seem because when that vendor refers you, they need to make sure that you are going to provide. And they have a lot of choices when it comes to whatever they are referring. So let's say uh, I'm working with a bride and that bride needs a photographer or a videographer. Well, what I would do is I would then refer Matt and I would say, hey, look, I have this awesome photographer here. Uh, and he is from Dynamic Cinema Produ- Productions. His name is Matt, and he does some awesome stuff. I I love him, and um, you know I definitely recommend him. Now you can have a list of recommended vendors. Now you can have um, them for everything. So you can have them for um, you know catering or venues or photographers, videographers, or you know whatever it may be. You can definitely have the different kinds of preferred vendors. Now it is not. It, it is somewhat difficult because like, I don't just want any photographer or videographer jumping on, right? I want to make sure that they are the real deal. Now, once you show me that you're the real deal, then I will allow you to get on my preferred vendor list. But that kind of takes a lot of work because what I'm doing is I'm basically putting myself on the line telling those uh, clients that that. I recommend this for your personal event that this is the best for you. So it's not like it's just like anybody can get on a preferred vendor list. It really is a kind of an honor to get on a preferred vendor list. And so what you have to do is you have to prove that you are the real deal and that you don't just kind of think you know what you're doing, but that you actually know what you're doing. And uh, it's even better if something goes wrong at an event because then that vendor, as long as you fix it, knows that you know how to fix it, right? Because then you're not only a good DJ, but you're a good problem solver as well. And that is super nice. So, you know, I had Matt come up with a few ideas of what he thinks um, would help DJs get on the preferred vendors list because that's who I'm targeting right now is DJs. So go ahead. We have a couple of ideas. What is the first one that you would say is the best way for um, a DJ to get on your preferred vendors list? Just some tips. Uh, number one probably would be communication. Um, you know, if, if it's, you know, something like a wedding, it would very important that you get everything right. You know, it's a one-time thing. Um, you know, you, you want the, you want the DJ to get in contact with you, you know, weeks prior. I mean, even months prior, depending on when you're hired for the event, um, you know, to make sure everything's set up. There's no, you know questions when you arrive um you know make sure that you know where everything's going to be set up at um so that so so you say have the dj contact the 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 videographer or photographer prior to the event uh the earlier the better Uh make contact make sure that everyone's on the same page make sure that um that if there are any problems that could arise that you are handling them uh 
you know, before they could even be thought of, that you're a problem solver before it even happens, yes. right? Yeah, definitely. So I always say that uh, wedding planners are professional problem solvers because, you know, they wouldn't have a job if everything went perfect. Mm -hmm. But of course, with weddings, nothing goes perfect and the timelines are always um, off a little bit. And, you know, this happens or, you know, this happens. And, and so they are just professional um, problem solvers. So if you can prevent the problems, which is what the good wedding planners do, is they seek out problems before they even happen. If you can do that, then as a, as a DJ with the photographer or videographer, then you are one step ahead of all the other DJs. And, okay, how many DJs have contacted you um, prior to the event? Like how many DJs have actually contacted you before your weddings? One. And who was that? And that was you. <laughs> and that was me. Look, it's, it's, a, it's a really important thing um, that you contact uh, your, your vendors and the vendors that you're working with prior to the, um, prior to the event. Mm -hmm. And that not only goes for the photographer or videographer, but it also goes for the other ones, um, which would be like... Uh, the venue, you know, you need to contact the venue, get in contact, make sure that um, you you work out any potential problems that could be there before they even um, arise. So here's an example. I am doing a prom coming up and they are a winter ball and they have told me I've never worked with this ven uh, venue before. So I got in contact with them, told them what's up and they told me, yeah, um, you have two hours to set up. Well, it's a four hour setup <laughs> and I prefer five. And so I'm like, okay, well, what can we do here? Because that won't work. And they're like, well, you get two hours. I'm like, okay, no, what else can we do here? Like, mm -hmm. you know, really? And they're like, well, you can get here, you know, four hours earlier and set up. I'm like, okay, like, like, why didn't you tell me that? But, but I'm working out problems. So instead of then going to the school and telling them, oh, well, look, um, I can't do that. And then making the school go do it. I can just handle the problem and I can make sure that because if I got there four hours early, I wouldn't have been able to get in the venue because nobody was there. So I wouldn't have been able to set up, which then would have caused drama, which then would have caused extra stress when the problem was 100% solved prior to any, um, uh, any, any conflicts then, right? So you need to get in contact with not only your um, photographer, or videographer, but do it way before, um, you have to. So I, I I mean, how many months would you say is a good amount prior to the event? Like if possible, right? Let's say you both get booked uh, a year and a half out. What is the best time to contact? Because you don't want it to be like too far out that, mm -hmm. of course, the other photographer forgets about you, but you don't want it to be too soon. Yeah. Well, I, I would say probably at least like three months. That three way, months. You know, because not a lot of changes are going to happen mm -hmm. within that amount of time for, you know, weddings especially. Um, so. So, yeah, what I would probably do is reach out about three months out, make a contact, say, hey, I'm working with you on this, uh, and, and maybe ask a few generic questions. Hey, do you need anything from me? Uh, you know, whatever. Looking forward to working with you. Just be nice. Be casual. Be cool. Doesn't have to be super formal. But um, they're gonna reach back out, say some stuff, and say, hey, you know, uh, if you have any cool pictures, I'd love to. I'd love to pay you for the rights to use them. Just connect, because you never know. Mm -hmm. And just by saying that has gotten me a ton of people like, oh, well, here's the photo. You don't have to pay me for it. You know, and it's like, awesome. Thank you. You know, so just reaching out in the first place. And then what I would also recommend is probably a week at the, at the uh, max, really. I would say two weeks, reach out prior to the event to the um, photographer, videographer. Make sure that everything's still all good. Make sure there aren't any major last minute changes that are going on yep. that you should know about um, because you don't wanna be uh, out of the loop, right? Because that's no fun. Um, Okay, so then what would be another tip that you would say? Uh, definitely being clean with your workspace. Presentation is also, you know, one of the biggest things with being a DJ, um, especially for, you know, photographer, videographer. You want, you want to get clean shots. And if you're at a wedding and the DJ just has a messy setup and, you know, that that's a big part of... The event then it's just not going to look good on camera it's not going to 
lead to you know good reviews and satisfaction from the customer so um yeah it's it, it's just it, it's very important to have clean workspace don't have you know yeah yeah drinks you know yeah so cups, what would food. some of those things be what would some of the things that um you have seen in the past at past weddings that you would say are really bad and that make djs look bad uh Empty water bottles, uh, solo cups, you know. Oh, perfect. Red solo cups. How good is that? <laughs> Food, uh, trash, just, you know, just stuff that you can deal with. It, it just, it's just simple things, you know. And also presentation in, in your own equipment, um, you know, making sure that wires are hidden. Uh, also keeping up in contact with everyone so that you know no one's tripping over cords or things like that uh because that that's actually happened to me before so um don't want to do that so so keep in communication with the photographer and videographer throughout the night and i would say that extends also to the venue uh to the caterer to the wedding planner Mm -hmm. um to the bartenders anything make sure that you uh stay in contact with them because you don't want uh, because things change, right? So you don't want anything to happen. And it's happened to me where I'm like, okay, what about this? Like, are, are we still on track? And they're like, yeah, we're on track for that, but uh, we're not going to have the cake cutting, right? And it's like, okay, well, that's kind of a big deal um, and kind of a major change that you should have told me about. But if I wouldn't have gone out and asked them about it, it really could have been awkward when I'm announcing the cake cutting mm-hmm. and, um, and yeah, they decided not to do it. So definitely definitely um keep in contact throughout the night and it's happened to me many times where they end up um, changing things around and um even just small stuff and i uh get in contact with the wedding planner or if they have a venue day of planner i get in contact with them stay in contact with them throughout the whole entire um night to make sure that um you know we're just on track and they generally know more than i do they will um, usually know the parents, know the family, and so if I have a question like, hey, who's Jennifer, they can direct me exactly to who Jennifer is, which is super mm-hmm. um, helpful and super nice, and you wouldn't have that if uh, you don't stay in contact because then it's kind of awkward you know, asking random people about who random people are. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, so another tip, what would you say um, would be bad would be a bad thing that a DJ would do that would definitely not get him on your preferred vendor list. Uh, <laughs> something would be, um, you know, something small, but definitely important that, you know, you probably wouldn't think about, uh, you know, if you're a DJ and you, you want to use like laser lights, you know, something like that. And, you know, you're a photographer or videographer and you don't get told that that's going to happen throughout the night and you you know you're taking photos i mean unless you're like you know checking the photos or if you're snapping away you go back later on and you find that there's a bunch of dots all over the screen and you have to try and work with it then you're going to be really frustrated and that's that's not going to end well <laughs> so dj's those lights that he's talking about are are the laser lights that shoot out you know hundreds of lasers and the ADJ makes one, the Micro Galaxian, and then like the Swarm 5FX and the Stinger from ADJ. Uh, they're cool lights and they're good effects, but when you're at a wedding, you can't edit those lasers out. I mean, uh, as a photographer and especially a videographer, you cannot get them out. They are super, super hard. And I have seen some horrible pictures of brides um, with a solid laser three lasers on their face that you can't edit out so look don't do it don't use those laser lights because i don't really even like the look of them but they don't look good on camera and especially i i mean so so what he was saying is if if that photographer isn't checking it out throughout the night and then they get home and then you know however long later a week or two weeks later they, they start editing the photos and they see that every single one has lasers in them that's really bad mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. And, and because then it's ruined i mean they can't <laughs> go back and i've never run into that issue but i don't even recommend using laser lights really at all i don't like the led dots either i like more of a more elegant um moving head with mm-hmm. a gobo kind of look um, because it's just more elegant and it looks nicer and it comes up better in photos and it just makes you look more professional. 
and is a bigger investment, but I think it's definitely worth it because you can you can end up charging more and getting um, more of that money coming back. But I, I think one of the big things is you know just the education part because I think a lot of DJs don't think about it and they think oh yeah it's a cool laser light it's cool <laughs> when it turns out that it can actually really really hurt your business if you um, are not are not up to up to date with that kind of stuff uh, and you know, I just don't use them at all. I mean, some DJs say don't use it during the first dance. I don't think you should use them at all because Mm -hmm. I mean, even if it's throughout the night and everybody's dancing, those lasers are still everywhere. And it just is not, I I don't, I don't, I don't get what's cool with them. I mean, I just don't think they're very cool. Well, and they're very distracting too, you know, especially, yeah. If like first dance, it's like, you want them to be focused on the people Uh that you don't want them to be focused on. Let alone during the, during the, during the dancing, even if it is super high energy, I just don't like them. I don't, I, I don't I don't know what service they 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 um provide. Like they're they're just not they don't add anything. They're just there. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just don't like them. I think they're kind of a waste and I feel like um for the money you could get different effects that would be much more worth it. Now the crowd scanning lasers where um you need a, a variance to operate, that's kinda of different because those are cool. Uh but I the, those aren't really used at weddings. Uh, those are more bigger events, uh, raves, clubs, and some, maybe some school dances, but not really. Um, I, I don't know. I just don't like them. And they remind me of budget, like a budget DJ. And that is, you know, what I'm not trying to be. I'm moving out. And I think that's what a lot of DJs who are listening to this podcast are, are trying to get away from is that whole budget um, area. And so when I decided I really wanted to start growing, I made a decision that I'm not using those laser lights. I'm not using the LED dot lights i'm not using um you know those all-in-one strobe um stinger uh lights ever again and it was more because i just didn't like the look of it and i felt like again you know i've talked about it in branding if you want to create a brand you have to be different if you want to create a successful brand you need to be different and i felt like every single dj had those lights and what was better were moving headlights because not every dj had them and so it really set me apart when I got to change and had better, better lighting. And you can see it in the videos that it just makes it different. And that is um, super important. So once I made that decision, I, I like, I, I still have the lights, but I don't use them. And, you know, if, if you want to, if you want to change and you really want to change how you, uh, how you run your business and how you, um, and, and if you want to, you know, you need to find out what you want to do. If you're trying to just go after the budget clients and go uh, quantity and just book, you know, have 50 events a month or, you know, 30 events a month and you just want to go, 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 but it's much lower end, then that's what you have to do. But I think most DJs want to have less events, maybe have four to 10 events per month and do much more of the uh, quality and charge more uh, and, and kind of get a better feeling instead of just like, oh yeah, I'm doing this event tonight and this event tomorrow and this event the next day. It's more like I have two awesome, awesome, unbelievable weddings coming up and I'm getting paid a fair, a very fair amount, which means I get to take very, uh, good care of my clients, which then, you know, I get to provide a better service for them. So you need to figure out what you want to do as a DJ. And I think that's kind of the other important side of this is once you find that, then go find photographers, videographers, uh, the venues, caterers that that then share that same kind of idea because there are venues out there that are low budget, right? And, and they will not be you if you are the super high end um, DJ, you will not get on the budget uh, venues preferred vendor list. That's just not how it works. And likewise, if you're the budget DJ, you're not getting on the high end uh, venue, um, preferred vendors list. So kind of find out what you want to do, find out the field that you're going for, and then actually follow that and find the people that will, um, that will help you make that happen. Awesome. 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 So Matt, what would be, uh, the third and last tip that you would give to DJs who want to jump on, uh, other vendors preferred vendors list or, uh, what they shouldn't do to, you know, ensure that they would not get on other uh, vendors lists you know i would say probably just overall professionalism because it not only shows that you're a good dj you know what you're doing um but it rubs off on other people you know when someone is 
doing a good job it you know it kind of wants to make them be on that level and you know perform even better and that's that's kind of what I do I mean when I see other people working hard I want to work even harder than them and when you're professional that's just that's just huge it's huge in in any aspect of what you do but especially when you're trying to work with so many different clients you, you want to make a good impression for every single one of them so yeah just overall being professional with other uh with other vendors and you know i think there are many ways to do that but i think the main one is you know right off the bat like first impressions having a professional email address you know comes across as hey i mean business um and having a nice looking website you know all professional things that will carry over as well uh, it will carry over to clients as well and then I think, yeah, you need to be professional when you're sending emails, making sure that you have the correct grammar and all that kind of stuff. And there's actually a plugin that I use into Google Chrome. It's called Grammarly. Okay, it's G R A M M A R L Y, and it's 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 a plugin, and so it automatically runs. So every single time I'm typing something into uh, Google Chrome anywhere, so I'm like writing on Google Docs or I'm writing an email um, through Outlook or you know whatever it may be. It's checking it to make to make sure that my grammar is correct, and it's helped me so 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 many times because sometimes what we think is normal is not, and how we talk is normal it's not, and so it's one hundred percent free, and you just you just allow it to plug in and it um, like scans it and then tells you if uh, you have something wrong and then it'll correct it for you. So you just like hover over the word. And so it's kind of like a spell check, but it's actually also for the grammar. So it does both, which is super, super helpful, which then makes you look more professional altogether. And then with that, uh, you know, just being not, I don't want to say not acting like an amateur, because if you don't know something, you don't want to act like you know it, but don't come in acting like you're new, you know, I mean, maybe um, if you don't know something, definitely say that you don't know it, but uh, you know, definitely come in and don't act like this is your first rodeo because that will definitely not not help you with the photographer and videographer, especially if um, it's so far out that photographer and videographer may end up getting red flags that then tell you to not do it. So that's really important, you know, just being professional altogether. And then at the event, also being extremely professional, uh, being friendly, smiling. I think that's a big thing um, that a lot of people miss out on and then post event i think what's really important is getting back in contact staying in contact and just kind of saying hey you know i uh, had a great time working with you this last weekend uh you know when you finish e- editing those photos those videos uh, i love to i love to check them out um you know maybe uh if if you'd like um I, what, what i generally say is hey you know if you like um i'd love to possibly pay you for the rights <clears throat> for the rights to use those photos uh, as marketing material um, for my website and for Instagram and usually they are ultra thrilled to do that because then you know they're getting some exposure and they just say hey can you just leave that watermark on and I'm happy to do it and you know there, there you go so so that's really cool not only that but then you can make uh, connections with them and so I always talk about having professional photos and videos done and um, so that's really important. Well, if you make connections with people, you can then start working with them. And, um, you know, if you have a big event on this day and you want a, a video uh, person to come out for, let's say, a school dance, you can, uh, you know, get hooked up with a deal should, um, should you have a good relationship with them. And they'll come out and hook you up and get some awesome photos for you, get some awesome videos for you and um, do some cool stuff for you. So that is really, really important. Um, Is there anything else that you would say to DJs who want to connect with more people throughout the industry? Well, like you mentioned earlier, that kind of struck me was body language is huge. I mean, people don't really think about it when they're, you know, out working. Body language, people read it and it's it's kind of looked looked over upon and um not only that but it's if you're if you aren't professional and you you know someone's asking you for you know someone that you recommend because 
maybe they haven't tried you out before. Maybe they just coming to you as a, you know, a, a friend or, or whatnot. And, and they, and you refer them to someone and they're not professional. It, it's, it's just, it's not, it doesn't look good for you. It doesn't, it just doesn't look good all, all around. And, and that only happens once. I mean, if I, if I refer somebody and that person's not ultra professional and I get a, Hey, you know, you, we, we contacted that, that photographer and he never got back to me. Okay. That's the last time they are being referred Mm -hmm. ever. I am never under any circumstances referring that because it's a reflection of me. And then it makes me look bad, even though it shouldn't. And even though, yeah, I mean, I'm not, they're not part of my brand or my business. It doesn't matter. It makes me look bad, which then hopefully it hopefully doesn't, but it, possibly then puts um bad thoughts into my clients's uh um mind that well if he Mm -hmm. referred him what does that mean about him and then everything goes downhill because then you know it takes you uh, a little bit longer to refer to to um reply back to an email and then that client's worried that you know may it's a sign and, and then and then they start thinking that something's there just like the placebo effect effect they start then believing that this is bad because they had a bad experience which could have been a fluke but you know what i'm saying it 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 very easily can get twisted and that is not what you want any other ideas uh for djs um to connect with photographers and videographers i i think we hit the the main keys um hopefully you know hopefully there's not a lot else that you know I, i have to critique on you know going forward but those are the big things in, you know, any industry. Right, right. So, yeah, definitely stay professional. Make sure that you, um, you know, get in contact with people prior. Make sure that you're just being smart altogether. Making sure that you don't have any drinks. Uh, you know, I don't recommend you drink alcohol at events, but make sure you don't just have water sitting on your on your, um, on your your table. Put it uh, down. Put it below the table. Make sure it's out of the view of guests because that will make you look cleaner. Uh, with your setup and having just better, um, it'll just make you look better as well as in the photos because you do not want anything uh, to be remembered as, oh yeah, you know, that thing. You don't want that. Maybe maybe you vlog all day and you don't want everybody to remember that you had your camera because your camera was set up on your table. So, you know, just small stuff like that. Just, just think it through and um, be smart. Thank you, Matt for jumping on um, this podcast. Okay, so if somebody wanted to reach out to you, if they wanted to uh, check you out, how would they uh, get in contact with you? Uh, Dynamic Cinema Productions on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, um, Vimeo, uh, other platforms, but those are the the main three. Dynamic Cinema Productions. Thank you, Matt, for jumping on the podcast today. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so that was Matt, awesome, awesome photographer and videographer from Sacramento. He's my personal uh, photographer and videographer. He does all of my stuff. And if you do jump on DJ TJ training, you will see all of the edits that he's done to all the videos. He takes them from just a raw clip, puts the audio on there, puts it all together, and 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 sends it over to me. So yeah, he drops some awesome knowledge on you. Uh, very, very, very helpful, and that will definitely help you grow as a DJ and make more connections, get on more preferred vendor lists, and definitely help you grow. So thank you for checking out this week, uh, this week's episode of the Peak Period Podcast. My name is Tanner James, DJ TJ with DJ TJ Training, and tune back in next week for another awesome, awesome, awesome podcast. I can't wait for next week.